Hi there, it's Miss M back with another video and this one is all about positive feedback. Now I apologize, I had some audio and technical difficulties with uh, the editing process of this video. So this is a refilming of the introduction for positive feedback. I hope you enjoy this and find some inspiration when using these strategies with your little ones at home or in your speech therapy room or wherever you're at. All right, enjoy. Your words, moms, dads, SLPs, teachers, your words matter. The way that you are conveying your messages to your little ones matter. So we're gonna talk about positive feedback. Now positive feedback is something that I think it's good to have these little reminders of what that looks like because we all have moments where it doesn't always come supernatural to us, right? And I mean super and then natural, not supernatural. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, you know, I sometimes, you know, I'm tired and it's harder for me in a speech session to stay away from just saying no, as in no, don't do that, or no, that's not correct, right? And not that I'm mean about it, but even just that much saying no or no, try again, that can be um, less motivating for our little ones when we're trying to promote communication, when we're trying to promote expected or desired behaviors, more positive behaviors. So let's talk about it and what it looks like. Of course, got my notes right in front of me just because I wanna make sure I get all this information to you. But the bottom line is children are more likely to respond when they are given praise. So, um, or not respond, but they're more likely, we well, yeah, respond but they're more likely to repeat a desired action or a word when they are given praise or encouragement. So if we're setting up an environment that allows for that, um, a big thing my school district does and, and coaches our teachers in is the growth mindset, which is all about taking into account what we're saying, how we're praising, um, how we are um, reinforcing and so you've probably heard maybe things like negative versus positive reinforcement. So I'm kind of talking about those things in the form of feedback. That's just, I'm using the word feedback because I'm not always, um, especially when it comes to communication, I'm not always trying to use external motivators or external reinforcers. Sometimes they're necessary. Sometimes, yes, we're working so we can play with the trains or sometimes food is a motivator and sometimes we're working for a goldfish. That does happen and I work very closely with my BCBAs, so my behavioral therapists and um, behavioral techs and I love working with all of them because they teach me so much and when we work together at including that positive feedback and building that intrinsic motivation through some of those external motivators and we collaborate, we do see some great growth in, in our students. But I always like to think of things, again, intrinsically. And so um, we start with how we, how we respond. We start with the feedback we get, right? So an, an example of what this might look like in a communication situation. Um, if you your little one uh, maybe is still working on, you know, um, their past tense. So he, your little one might say, oh, he goed really fast. Instead of saying, you know, no, that was wrong. Try again. It's he went really fast, right? Just praise the fact that they, um, they tried. I mean, they really, he goed really fast. Yeah, you know. Now what do you do? You say, you're right, you're right. He went really fast. As It's that subtle. So you don't have to necessarily directly say, you got that wrong or, um, you know, it's a different way, try again. No, you just, you're praising their attempt and then you're what we, you're doing what we call recasting. So you're interpreting what they said the, the way you might want them to try and say it next time. So it's that, okay, they're not there yet. That's that growth mindset. We're still gonna, you know, I'm gonna give them that positive feedback. Great try, he went fast, or great job, he went fast, because we. my goal with my students especially is to build up their confidence, um, make them confident communicators, regardless of how they communicate, regardless if they get their past tense EDs and, um, you know, or, 
aren't putting their ing's or regardless of if they're just using gestures at that time or facial expressions or maybe something that they're really strong in I'm always trying to make them know or let them know that you're doing great let's keep that up let's keep that momentum because as their confidence and self-esteem rises their desire and their motivation to continue communicating and maybe try new things is is just gonna grow and when we talk about that self-esteem and that trying new things um, we want them to feel confident in making mistakes and so something that I've talked about, I talk about it a little bit on my podcast and in other videos is I've learned how to be a good mistake maker. As a clinician, as a human, it's not something I was born with. I was born with the desire to be very perfect in a lot of things. And I've learned that there's so much beauty and learning that can come from the mistakes that I make, whether in life or as a clinician, you know. But sometimes, you know, if I'm in, a, in the moment with a student and maybe I drop something on the floor. Maybe I, um, you know, we have hand sanitizer in my speech room and sometimes when I go to give it to the kids, I accidentally press a little too hard and it gets all over the table. And even moments like that, you know, we just say, oh, it's okay, we just have to clean it up. You have to get a towel. There's so much language you could work on in those moments too. Um, so you wanna give plenty of opportunities to succeed uh, versus maybe always correcting um, and directly correcting, I mean, saying, no, that's wrong, you know, because that takes away those opportunities, one, for success. But when, let's say, your child makes a mess during bath time or during play, you know, and they might say, oh, yucky or something like that. And you can say, oh, that's okay. Yeah, we made a mess. Um, you know, we'll clean it up later. We're playing right now, or we're in the bath right now. You know, we're in the we're in the rest or the bathroom. That's you know, water sometimes gets on the floor. That's okay, right? It's so important for the little ones to see that. Yeah, I made a mess. We'll clean it up. That's such a great skill in life, right? Yeah, I made a mistake. I'm gonna do better next time. I'm gonna learn from this. Um, so, it's it's really important, and I go back to this all the time. Again, accept those gestures and facial expressions. Um, sounds, word approximations, and word approximations by that, I mean partial words, right? So maybe they don't, they're not saying boat, they're saying bah for boat. And you know that, so just always interpret that as boat. And don't put too much of an emphasis on, oh, no, say boat. Um, just interpret it, say, yes, the boat, the boat's on the water, you know? And, and just be their interpreter so that way you can build that self-esteem up and then they're more motivated to communicate. Um, and you know, when you do those kinds of things, it shows that you want to understand. It shows that you want to listen and it gives them more, um, more room or more, uh, safety, I guess I should say. It's that safe space that you've created to make mistakes because man, I noticed, you know, some of my students, especially, you know, let's say we're working on a, have a student with, um, speech sounds goal and maybe he's very hard to understand. And, you know, especially for my, some of my preschoolers that are at that kind of four, four year, almost five year age, they know, one, they know they have a harder time sometimes with those speech sounds because we're always like, you might give that look and I've done it. And I, I, I look back and I'm like, yeah, I'm better now. Still probably give that like, I don't know what you're saying look, that kind of concerned look. So we want to try and remember that's an, that's negative feedback in a way because that's an alarming look. It's concerning. And so you want to maybe try and think, you know, okay, I always want to give positive feedback. So what can I uh, praise in this moment? Well, you can praise their attempt at communication. So you can smile and look like, you know, you're really engaged and you're trying to understand and you're trying to listen. Because especially I've had a student where um, he was really unintelligible and he knows that he's making mistakes as he communicates because he can hear his peers. He had very good, um, you know, like he had very good discrimination of sounds like he knew he was having a hard time and so in those moments it's very important for us I would call us the guides right the communication guides because if you know you're not we're not all speech pathologists sometimes we're teachers in the classroom or we're the parents at home so it's really important as the communication guides to gently guide and to um, create that safe space where we're still here, we're still listening. It's okay that you're not saying your k and g sounds. It's okay, I'm still gonna interpret it for you and I'm not gonna say, nope, try again. Um, 
and I, I still, you know, even with my nephew, sometimes I forget to kind of take that step back and just recast very gently. Um, obviously, you know, as children develop and they get older, you know, there, there are ways you can continue to praise while continuing maybe to um, have a moment to practice the sound again or something like that. So I'm mainly talking about this positive feedback, definitely for like my preschool and early intervention ages, but this is really across the board when you think of behaviors, which is what I'm going to talk a little bit about next. Um, you know, because even adults have negative behaviors that sometimes, uh, you know, a communication partner might be struggling to um, give positive feedback for. But when we think about behavior, same thing with giving positive feedback, we want to praise the good stuff. So again, when you go back to the he goed really fast, you still praise the communication attempt. Yeah, you um, basically gave the correct answer, but you didn't force the production of that correct answer from the little one, right? So with behaviors, um, same thing with communication, we want to reward positive behaviors to help eliminate the negative ones. Now, it doesn't always happen. I mean, especially not right away. I've had speech sessions where I'm consistently, you know, I've got a child just yelling and talking and, and demanding a preferred toy, but they're sitting in their seat the whole time. So the whole time I'm like, thank you. I love how you're sitting in your seat, you know, and I'm just like holding it all together and hoping that that kind of gets through. And sometimes it's really hard. And sometimes, you know, that's when you pull out your visuals. Nope. First, first this, then this. And that's a whole, whole other set of strategies that I'll go over in a video eventually. But um, you know, we, we don't want to give too much attention to the unwanted behaviors, I'll call them, to the competing behaviors sometimes for our little ones, you know, those, those things that, you know, they're, they're maybe not, uh, not the safest behaviors or they're just not the most, um, positive behaviors, you know, so we don't want to, um, it's almost like you kind of want to just ignore them and just really try to praise those positive things. And so a good example, again, is going back to, you know, you've got the child, they're sitting in their seat, everything else doesn't seem to be going to plan, but you can praise that they're sitting. Um, another example that I'll use with parents is bath time. You know, you've got a child splashing in the bath um, and making a mess, but you really like how they're, um, you know, maybe using their words or, um, you know, because they're going up, down, up, down or something like that. And maybe they know they're not supposed to be making a mess. I don't know. Um, but they're still sitting in the bath. So I like how you're sitting because they're not up. They're not being unsafe, right? They're just splashing. And maybe you had already asked them not to splash too long, too high, but at least they are um, uh, sitting. I know sometimes it's hard and um, it, <sighs> Sometimes that, you know, taking away the attention from those unwanted behaviors doesn't seem like it's working in the moment. But when you build the repetition of praising those positive behaviors, it just, it might, like, building that repetition might take a while. Um, and, you know, you kind of just have to stick it out and stick with it. I've learned that with students in speech. You know, sometimes it takes a couple months to really, um, keep praising, praising, praising those positives and giving all that positive feedback to really see those behaviors. And again, I work with my behavioral therapists and my um, behavior techs and I'm so grateful for them because they help me so much and we can work together on building that intrinsic motivation because that's really where it's at. Um, other ideas that I've seen that are really helpful for kind of promoting those behaviors and, and giving those opportunities to give positive feedback because really, as the communication guide um, or the behavior guide, we can give those opportunities to give that positive feedback to maybe enhance those positive actions, words, behaviors, what have you. Um, so some things I like to do to set that up for success a little bit more is give a helper role. So some of my kiddos that um, I'm really working on building those opportunities into our session, or I'll recommend, you know, parents do this at home or teachers do it in the classroom. We give a help, we make them the helper. Um, you know, so, so we might say, Matthew, can you go, you're going to be the light helper today, or just kind of sometimes because you're noticing you need to give them a lot of, um, uh, opportunities maybe in that specific day, or just, you know, it's 
right now that's where they're at. They need all those opportunities to be the helper. So you just call them the helper um, and they help with everything. Oh, can you bring Jenny her, her paper? Oh, can you go put this in, you know, Howie's cubby? I don't know. I don't even have a student named Howie, but um, <laughs> uh, that came to me. Woo. Um, so those are ways, you know, that helper role, because one, it just gives that sense of, I have a job, you know, I, I have, there's something special that I can do. And that is so important. One, it's just important to have that skill of wanting to help and wanting to be a kind friend. Um, and so, and then you're also giving the opportunity to say, thank you so much for helping. That was so kind. You know, you're such a good helper and things like that. Other things you can do, make time to listen. You know, when we're building in those opportunities, we'll make time to sit. And this is where I bring in my follow the child's lead. So maybe it's with a preferred activity. Maybe your child really likes mealtime. So maybe that's your special time to sit and be listening, whether, you know, you're you're working on listening to their communication attempts or interpreting their communication attempts, or if it's more of a behavioral um, situation, you know, but you could praise them for sitting, you can praise them for using their spoon. Um, or if it's a preferred activity, you know, let's say they really like, I'm gonna go back to dinosaurs because I always go to dinosaurs for some reason. I think that's just because I love dinosaurs. Um, you know, and you can praise them for, oh, I like how you made the dinosaur run really fast. You know, he's outside, that's where we run really fast. Um, uh, another idea too is watch your child, and I do this in speech, I watch them play with their friends. So I'll go observe them on the playground or in the speech room when we're having some little um, like time to play on the carpet or whatever. But I like to watch them and praise the good behaviors when they're with their peers. Because really I notice that my students seem to be, just the engagement goes up when their peers, you know, the kids that look like them, they're their size, they have similar voices and, um, you know, they just know, you just know when it's like, yeah, yeah, you get me, you're on my level. And so watching them with their peers and saying, I like how you shared with your, your friend. Um, and sometimes it's a good opportunity for you to turn a negative situation into a positive because if, you know, you're having a child struggle to share the blocks, maybe you can kind of get in there and um, be the guide again and kind of facilitate that. Well, if we share, we can build a really big tower. Um, or, you know, you're showing the sharing with the other child that maybe is a little bit more prone to sharing or anything like that. So those are just some tips. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all about the positive feedback. But, and I should have started the video with this, you know, as much as I am saying, do this, um, it doesn't always, it's not always the first thing we think. Sometimes, you know, depending on the day, I know, even though I don't have my own kids at this time, I know that it's hard sometimes to have your brain in the place to say, okay, I'm not gonna get frustrated or I'm not gonna freak out that there's, you know, um, food all over my floor or anything like that. So just give yourselves grace too, you know, and, and always know that um, if you forget in one moment, that's okay. You can try again tomorrow. There's always, there's always room to grow here. Just like we want our littles to feel safe, you feel safe and you know that you have room to grow too. Um, so there's my, there's my tidbits on positive feedback. Uh, I would love some feedback from you on how this helps. So definitely let me know. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. All right.